Welcome to the course on VLSI Physical Design with Timing Analysis. In this lecture, we will discuss about what are the timing constraint in a latch based system. So, the content of this lecture includes timing parameter of a latch, then we will discuss about two phase latch, we will discuss about the maximum timing and minimum timing analysis. So, we will discuss about latch. So, before going to the latch, we have already discussed about the flip flop. So, what are the main difference between a latch and a flip flop? So, you have a latch and, and a flip flop. So, the flip flop the flip flop is edge triggered. And the latch is label sensitive. either the positive label or the negative label. So, we have two different types of latch, one is called positive label sensitive latch, positive label sensitive latch or we have a negative label sensitive latch. So, in case of positive level sensitive latch, the latch is transparent during the positive half cycle. Okay. So, the latch will be transparent during this time and this is transparent means it will pass the pass the data from input to the output. So, let us take a latch here. And you have a clock here, then you have a D pin and this is Q pin. Okay. So, what it does is that when your uh, latch, when the latch will pass the data from D to Q, when your clock is positive. So, it is a positive label, label sensitive latch. Okay. So, um, and it will not pass. So, it will be uh, opaque during the negative half cycle. Okay. So, this is for a positive label sensitive latch. Similar analysis holds for the negative label sensitive latch. In case of flip flop, we have two types of flip flop is there. One is called uh, positive or rising edge triggered triggered flip flop and the second one is called the negative or falling edge triggered flip flop. So, in case of flip flop, it will not pass the signal all time, it will only pass when your clock is rising. It will only pass the signal D to Q when your clock is rising or clock is falling based on the type. So, for a positive or rising edge triggered flip flop, it will sample the data only in the rising edges like this is the first rising edge, this is the second rising edge. Okay. So, only it will sample or the pass the data from D to Q in the rising edge and it is completely opaque or it will not pass the signal in rest of the times. So, it has a very sharp edge, but latch is bit flexible and it passes the data completely half cycle. So, that is the main difference between a latch and a flip flop. With this discussion, we will go to the different parameters of a latch. So, what are the parameters we latch has? 
So, latch has multiple parameters what are used for timing analysis, what are used for timing analysis. So, basically we will discuss each of the parameter uh, in detail. So, first one is the clock to Q, P, P C Q or I can write P clock to Q maximum. Okay. So, this is called the latch clock to Q propagation delay or max delay. Similarly, the second one is uh, P C C Q or P clock to Q minimum. So, this is latch clock to Q contamination delay or the minimum delay. Then the third parameter is P setup. So, the latch, the setup time of the latch Then the fourth one is T hold is the hold time of the latch. These are quite similar to flip flop, but the latch has two more extra parameter which is called T P data to Q or T D to Q maximum. This is basically latch D to Q propagation or the max delay. And the sixth one is uh, T C D Q or T D to Q minimum. This is the latch D to Q contamination delay. or the mean delay. Okay. So, these are the latch parameters. So, the first four is there quite similar to flip flop. So, flip flop has the same parameter. However, these two are the specially used for latch. These are the extra timing parameter. of latch. Okay. So, this 5 and 6 are the extra timing parameter of the latch. Let us go and look into those uh, things in detail. So, you have a latch is there. This is D, this is Q and this is clock. Okay. So, we can plot the different signals, then we can define those parameter. So, here if you can see you have a clock, this is your clock. Now, you have a D. 
this is the timing diagram for the latch ok. So, let us this is the D then your Q will appear after some time ok the Q will appear after some time. So, there are two delays there the Q will appear after the rising edge of the clock it will take some minimum time and some maximum time. So, what is the minimum time that is called uh, here you have a minimum time and it can also take some time to it will take some maximum time to settle to the actual output and it takes some minimum time or it start to glitch. So, this one this time is one timing parameter and this time is another timing parameter ok. So, this time is my T clock to Q minimum and this time is my T clock to Q maximum. Now, after this uh, uh, clock to Q parameter, now we have two more parameter which is called uh, T D to Q maximum, T D to Q minimum. How can you define those parameters? Let us say my data is coming inside the positive half cycle ok, it is happening coming inside the positive half cycle. So, this is your D and Q will come after the after the uh, D, but it will take some minimum time and it will take some maximum time ok. So, this is let us say the minimum time and this is the maximum time let us say this from this to this is my minimum time and from this to this is my maximum time. So, I can write this one as my T D to Q D to Q minimum and this one as my T D to Q maximum. So, basically we have two extra parameter which is not there in case of a flip flop. Now, and here the setup uh, and hold uh, information is slightly different compared to the uh, flip flop. So, how I can define the setup and hold for uh, this let us say uh, I have a data. So, I will do it in the top to e.g. understanding. So, my uh, basically your data is coming just before the falling edge of the clock ok. So, just before the falling edge of the clock and uh, it is falling down just after the falling edge of the clock. So, what is the minimum time before this to this what is the minimum time your data this is your data. So, what is the minimum time before the falling edge of the clock your data should be stable such that it can be sampled by the latch properly is called the setup time. So, this is your setup time and this is the minimum time after the falling edge of the clock your data should be stable such that it can be sampled by the latch properly that is your whole time. So, this is your uh, basically T setup and this is your T hold ok. So, now it is slightly different from the flip flop you, we are checking the setup and hold in the falling edge of the clock signal for positive level sensitive latch. Okay, so, we will discuss about two phase uh, latch first. Okay, so, what is the assumption is that here we do not consider any time borrowing. Okay, what is the assumption? Okay, 
we are not considering any time barring and path the path takes no more than 1 clock cycle. So, here this is assumption all the combinational logics are evaluated within 1 clock cycle. So, if you can see here I have a, a latch here. I have a latch here, I have a latch here. So, L 1, L 2, L 3. Now, I have a uh, this is phi 1, this is uh, phi 2, this is phi 1. Now, we have a uh, combinational logic is there. So, this is uh, combinational 1, then you have a combinational logic is there combinational 2. So, this is my D 1, this is Q 1, D 2, Q 2, D 3, Q 3. Okay. This is phi 1. Okay. So, the phi 1 is this one and this is phi 2 now the, you, we have phi 1 and phi 2 ok now we will see how my data d basically your clock period is this one from here till uh, this one is your t clock ok and this is the your t clock ok here first we will do the max timing analysis. I need to first uh, pass the signal d 1 ok let us say this is my d 1. Okay, so D one is changing inside my positive half cycle. Okay, my this is my D one. Then my Q one, Q one will change after some time. This uh, this is this I have to take the max of the delay. Okay, so this delay is basically T d to q maximum t d to q 1 maximum because we are dealing with the latch 1 and this is my q 1 now the signal is at q 1. So, now I have to go to d 2 it will take some time to go to d 2. So, how much time it will take to go to d 2? How much time it will take to go to D 2 is basically it will take some time to go to D 2 this much time. So, inside this positive half cycle of phi 2 inside the positive it can be early it can be late, but if it is coming inside the positive half cycle then it can be sampled by latch 2 immediately. So, now this delay from here to here this delay is my t combinational 1 max ok. So, because this is my t combinational 1. Now, after that we have uh, basically latch 2 is now transparent because it is uh, basically this is the positive half cycle of the latch 2. So, the latch 2 is transparent then it can sample your uh, uh, data d 2. So, now we have q 2 basically which will come after a delay of this one which is a 
basically latch parameter this delay is basically your this delay is t d to q to maximum now we have uh, basically d3 okay d3 which will take some time to appear but it should be available by this period to be sampled immediately so this delay is my this delay is my t combinational to maximum because this is my combinational delay so d3 is this d3 okay now i have a time period this t clock i have a time period this t clock which consist of four parameter okay which consist of four parameter what is the constant here your constant will be t clock should be greater than equals to the first parameter this one t d to q 1 maximum so this is coming from this one then comes the second one this one plus t combinational 1 maximum then the third one t d to q 2 maximum then the fourth one is this one t combinational 2 maximum so this is my constraint equation in case of a two phase latch this is the constraint equation in case of a two phase latch where we are doing all the operation in one clock cycle the path is not taking more than one clock cycle means we can borrow timing inside the latch but you cannot borrow across the cycle we will discuss this time borrowing part in a separate lecture for the time being you assume that the, both the combinational 1 and combinational 2 is executed or completed in one clock cycle. So, what is the sequencing overhead here? The sequencing overhead overhead in this case is basically T combinational maximum plus T combinational 2 maximum should be less than equals to T clock minus T D to Q 1 max plus T D to Q 2 max. So, what is the sequencing overhead? We are basically finding the delay of the combinational uh, path which is ideally it will take this much of time but if you do the sequencing or the basically uh, synchronization using latches what is the extra delay we are adding to the path so the this extra delay is basically this much okay so this is my sequencing overhead overhead in case of a latch based system basically 2 d to q is the sequencing overhead so now the same two phase latch we are doing the second analysis which is called the uh, minimum timing analysis So, we will uh, basically draw the latch based diagram, then we will discuss the uh, timing diagram. So, this is the latch 1, and we have this is D, this is D1, and this is Q1, and you have some combinational delay. You can say this is combinational delay then your another latch is there
this is phi 2 this is d 2 and this is q 2 and this is l 2 ok. So, now we will discuss the minimum timing analysis. So, here also we, we have phi 1. So, now we will do the minimum timing analysis. So, why this uh, diagram is like that? Because we are considering basically uh, the phi 1 uh, basically it is arriving lay I means uh, timing axis it is coming later and your phi 2 is uh, coming early. In this case how my hold violation will happen ok. So, what is the thing here is that we have phi 1 and phi 2 then we have your d is changing let us say your d is here ok. So, now I have d 1 ok. So, which is basically changing somewhere here before the basically positive half cycle of the phi 1. Now, it will take some time to come to q 1 ok. So, what is that time q 1 from the rising edge it will take some time to come to q 1 ok. Let us say this time since I am doing minimum timing analysis this delay will be my t clock to q minimum because I am taking from the rising edge of the clock. Now, I have d 2 what is the time it will take to minimum combinational delay. So, this time from here to here is basically my t combinational minimum ok. Now, my whole time is basically is this much from here whole time is is from here to here ok. So, my this one is my t hold this one is my t hold. So, there are one more parameter is here which is basically this window from here to here this is basically your t non overlap. Okay, this is my t non overlap. Now, tell me in one side my basically t hole should be there in other side all the components should be there. So, let us say my equation I am writing my equation t hold should be less than equals to what are the things will come? The first one is my t non overlap because I am doing this calculation from this clock edge this falling clock edge. So, it should come t non overlap plus t clock to q minimum plus t combinational minimum. So, this is my constraint. So, for uh, whole time if your non overlap time is larger then it helps to avoid hold constraint. So, this is my hold constraint for a two phase latch. So, what will be my combinational delay in this case this t combinational minimum should be greater than equals to t hold minus t clock to q minimum. minus t non overlap. So, this is my constraint in terms of combinational delay what should be there. So, if your non overlap time is larger then there is a less chance of having the hold violation ok. But uh, non overlap time if it is larger then your evaluation time for doing any operation through the latch also reduces. So, there is a trade off between non overlap time versus the available time for evaluation. So, we need to decide how much non overlap time is suitable such that we can satisfy both my performance versus the hold constraint. So, I will add one more point here. So, this hold time whatever it is there 
it is the parameter of latch 2 which is determined uh, doing spy simulation. It is a constant number, but we cannot uh, change that once the latch is used, but we can change the non overlap time, we can change the combinational minimum. Okay. So, what is the point here is that your T hold should be less than your uh, T non overlap plus T clock to Q minimum plus T combinational. So, uh, when you are using a latch from a standard cell library, okay, so you do not have anything to play with uh, what is the hold time that is given by the latch itself and also clock to Q minimum you cannot change it. These two are uh, basically as a designer you cannot change. So, this T hold and this one is cannot be changed. However, this uh, other two parameters like T non overlap and T combinational de delay is in the hand of a circuit designer. So, we can use the non T non overlap or T combinational minimum uh, to satisfy our whole requirement. We discuss about the two phase latch based system. Then we discuss the maximum and minimum timing analysis of a two phase latch based system. Thank you for your attention.